Uh, I work on the European Social Fund project for the Welsh Government, which is helping to part fund this event tonight. And uh, we've worked closely with the Welsh Local Government Association, with NHS Confederation, with ENLIA, with the academic sector, and many others, to try and pull together the agenda on citizen engagement in Wales. And Participation Cymru are a key deliverer on this. Now, today is about social media. And we've got here the champion from local government of social media, Peter Fox, who is the leader of Bonnershire County Council. He's an avid user of social media. He knows what it's about. His council are at the cutting edge of all this work. And he's going to talk to you about the survey that's been done and what we found out from the work that we've done on social media. But also, really, I'm sure, some of his own experiences from his own area. So, without further ado, can you please welcome Councillor Peter Fox. Thank you. Well, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, everybody. This is going to struggle now, because I don't know how I'm going to read notes and actually hold this mic at the same time. So, you're going to have to bear with me uh, on this. It's really great to be here. It's great to be somewhere where I am the only elected member. And we haven't got any others, and I bet you're quite glad there's only one of us here, because they are one of those pains in everybody's lives I know. And I've been one for, I don't know, a long time, 17 years. Um, I'm already going off my strip straight away, so I think this stuff is not going to be a lot of uh, help for me. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to join you. I'm sorry I haven't been able to be with you during the day, because I know some in 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 interesting stuff happened, and I know you're going to have some interesting things tomorrow uh, to, to look at. I'm really pleased that I'm addressing you before dinner, because any of those of you who have had to speak at times, um, to do that after dinner is terrible, isn't it? Because all the way through that meal, you know, you really are feeling uncomfortable, anxious, nervous, you want to go to the toilet, and all of, that, all of that stuff. So coming up first, you can actually enjoy your food, and you can see profile that I enjoy my food, so actually perhaps speaking after would be a better, a better thing to do. However, I can, I'm sure there's many of you now tweeting out, uh, Peter, you don't look that bad, and I, I, I thank you for that in advance. I'm told that's positive thinking on my behalf, and I'm told if you think positively long enough, it will manifest. Um, so, thank you. Um, I hope you've had a good day. I hope you've, you, you, you've picked up some good information. It's a really exciting time uh, we're, we're living in. Um, um, just a little bit of background. You, you've heard of the survey, which, which was commissioned by the Public Engagement Working Group. And, the, uh, and, and by way of a little bit of background to that then, can I just... I'm going to have to just dump this stuff as it, as it goes. There we go. Right. The Public Engagement Working Group... Um, are a multi-agency collaboration that came together to ensure coherence of effective citizen engagement approaches including knowledge, skills and good practice that lead to improved service delivery, delivery of public services across Wales. Absolutely fundamental for, for where we are. From recent studies and anecdotal information, we know that digital engagement and social media activity is varied across the public services in Wales. We also know that social media is increasingly seen as accessible and a cost-effective way to work in for all sectors. We wanted to have a clearer picture of the barriers for individuals and organisations in using social media and develop a programme of collaborative activities that would support organisations to overcome these barriers, such as skills development, national guidance, and more importantly, connecting those organisations that have something to share and those that have something to learn. I think that is so important because there is some really good work going on around Wales in social media. And there's a lot of people who want to get on board with that, but are perhaps a little nervous too. And that's why it's so important to have these sorts of events where we can actually share good practice, enthuse each other, and, and try to reassure each other, and teach each other how we can best actually take this, uh, this agenda really forward. Um, this survey, well, survey was undertaken in partnership with uh, Socketum, Wales, uh, Communities 2, Digital and Digital Inclusion, Customer Focus Wales and Local Government Data un Unit aim to provide us uh, with an evidence base to work from. And as a WLJ lead for uh, ICT and Digital Inclusion, I'm really happy to be uh, able to champion all of these things around Wales best I can. Um, I'm not as big, uh, you big me up well there, 
scary. I use uh, social media a bit. Sometimes I use it more than others because it's one. It's a dangerous place to play around on if you don't get it right. You know. So sometimes when we're feeling a bit low or you've got some real issues, it's uh, difficult to know when to. Well, perhaps I'll back out for a little while. But yeah, I'm I'm, just, I'm doing a bit on there. But you can learn to do a lot more. I could do, learn to do a lot more. And I think all of us, in, in certainly my council, whilst we're engaging a lot in this, in, in this way of working, we haven't got all the answers. Mum and Shira are trying to find a lot of the answers. We've got good people like this young lady here who are helping us find those answers, and we're not frightened to have a go. But um, there's an awful lot to learn, and it's something we've got to get right. We've got to get right because there's a real opportunity out there to engage with people who want to be engaged with. And we don't want to miss that, miss that opportunity at all. Right, another sheet. <laughs> in my own uh, county, I just want to reflect on a couple of things um, that we're doing. Um, technology is something we've absolutely grasped um, as a way of engagement. And just by way of uh, example, just to share a couple of things which we've been doing, not necessarily not listening to social media as well. Um, one of the key uh, things that perhaps you would have heard of is how we've um, worked with Wikipedia and created something called Monmouthpedia. Anybody heard of Monmouthpedia yet? Good, yeah. oh, cool. Um, well, go online and have a look at it because Monmouthpedia, Monmouth Town, is the first wiki town in the world. Okay, massively big thing. A lot of people don't realise it yet, but we work closely with Wikipedia. Um, and uh, they helped us, and they allowed us to use their brand. And Monmouthpedia now is a um, is a really it's been um, celebrated all over the world, Japan, lots of different places. And basically, we've got uh, QR codes stuck to hundreds of locations around the town in Monmouthshire. And anybody with a smartphone from whatever country can go. They can um, scan the. The, the, some, the QR code, and it will convert all of that tourist-type information into their own language. And that's everywhere through the town. And there's lots of tourist attractions. There's things on shops as well. Um, and to enable that to be even smoother, we Wi-Fi'd the whole town. So the town is Wi-Fi enabled so that people can access that, that benefit of, 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 the, of the, uh, the QR codes and the tourist, tourism offer it offers. There are digital portals in all of the buildings which also give that uh, insight into what we have to offer in the town. And we're going to roll that out across Monmouthshire as, we, as best we can to create something called Monmouthshirepedia. It's a bit of a naff name, I know, but, um, <laughs> but you know, we want to, every town, every community has something to offer. For, and a beautiful place like Monmouthshire where you know, it's fundamental to our economy to have a good tourism offer it's important that we enhance our offer all the time. So dig digital um, uh, inclusion is uh, something really quite fundamental to, to drive in that. So that's a really important step we've made through engagement, um, uh, to, to engage rather, with, with the people who are visiting us. Talking about something within the organisation, a um, couple of strands really through the organisation. And I know lots of your organisations are doing similar things, but we moved to something called Agile Working a couple of years ago. Well, we've, we've reduced um, all our, our, our office space by 50%. So, um, you know, I'm the only person in the council at the moment with an office. And I've only just had that. My office for the last 12 months has been in the back of a car with an iPad. In fact, I shouldn't even be using paper. It's, it's a no-no. We don't use... We're supposed to be going paperless, and I've got this on an iPad, but I thought... I'll be scrolling through an iPad and I'll miss the page and it'll go shooting by, but I'm, actually, you know, I'm a little bit uh, stuck here as well. Um, but, um, yeah, so we, we moved to this agile working and enabled to, to, to do that, we have to enable all of our staff to work in a different way. So we, we, they've all got access to their own laptops with their own numbers through a VoIP, um, through VoIP connection. You know what VoIP is, voice over internet protocol, so it's, uh, you know, Skype basically. Um, and all of those laptops have got that. They've all got um, video conferencing opportunity on them and, uh, and um, instant messaging. And they, uh, all members of staff carry their own uh, number wherever they are. So if they're in Australia, you can speak to them on that same number. And that's enabled us to address work-life balance for the staff. And it's also driven massive efficiencies 
through our accommodation needs and all of the savings which are derived through that. So it's been a massive part. Linked to that, in January 2011, we, we, we took away all controls or restrictions on members of staff using social media. So any member of staff can use any social media they wish and whenever they want to, during the working day, um, because we recognise that social media now isn't just a leisure thing, it's a way of communicating constantly. And some of you would have heard me say before, you know, um, we need to be where the people go, really, where the people are. And most of us now are interacting and engaging through social media. So isn't it right that our staff in all of our organisations should be engaging in that way to pick up those messages, to get part of those conversations, to be able to influence what's happening um, within the community and understanding how people are feeling. So that's, some, you know, that's really been important to us. Um, Helen and communication staff in Monmouthshire have an active uh, Twitter uh, feed with over 7,000 followers and a lot of those are uh, constituents and residents and constantly fielding lots of information about what's happening in those communities, you know, um, if any information, anything, any questions they ask, we, we fill those and we sort, sort those out. So it's absolutely a fundamental uh, um, part of the council now. It's not just, uh, just an add-on. So that's, a, that's a, a really important theme. Um, I as leader tweet, the chief executive tweets prolifically. He's, he, he's on it all the time. I'm a bit worried about you know, he, gets, <laughs> he gets a time from to do it, but he is constantly on it. But he's feeding out really positive bits of information, links to you know things we're doing, um, sharing wider and wider. You know, just the, the, the whole ethos of the council, because um, it does show the council in a whole different way if you can get into the right level and, and people can see that you are you are engaged with them. And he's doing an excellent lot job of that. But I've got an awful lot of other councillors who are trying to do it and I'm doing it. And I think that's a, sort of some of the key, key concern uh, I have, or rather not concern, the, the, the recognition I have that uh, we do need to do a lot more to help our, all of our members of organisation, be it staff or, in my case, councillors, to be able to use social media um, to its full potential and not use it in the wrong way. I think it's absolutely... But fun fundamental with that. The other part of social media we use in the council at the moment too is the internal social media such as Yammer. And Yammer is a really, really important part now of our employees' um, uh, work life really. They're engaging on key things all the time through that and, uh, and making links and, and, and you know it flattens the organisation, takes away those silos a lot because it levels the, the organisation. That's really important. And we've also got another um, use which has been highly commended and working very well and that's uh, our foster carers are using Yammer to communicate regularly and keep, uh, create an, a virtual network with themselves which is really good when they're under some difficult situations they can talk to others so Yammer is a really important uh, part as, as well so that's just a flavour, a hint of some of the things we're doing in the council maintain that all of our accommodation is, 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 is is all IT enabled so we can do video conferencing um, with remote access to meetings and things like that. So, so um, we're in a new building which will enable that to do even more in that regard now, now shortly. Um, so, um, I think I've covered it all. So, yeah, so I mean, just picking up on social media a, a little bit more. I mean, I was just really amazed the other day. I, I found a new way of using social media, or rather I found a new social media, it may not be you, new to you, um, it's called WhatsApp. Anybody use WhatsApp? Yeah. I think it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. My daughter's in Thailand at the moment, well she may be in Malaysia, Malaysia. she may be in Bali, <laughs> I know she's tripping around at the moment, but she can get contact with me every day through WhatsApp, and it's instant, and she can send massive videos and photos, and instantly, into, you know, and it's absolutely fantastic, you know. So you can't ignore that type of social media, which we're all getting more and more involved in. LinkedIn is another one, which I, I, why do people keep inviting me to join LinkedIn? I cannot manage to do another 
a look at another social media site. I need a full-time job just to look at my feed. So I just keep ticking, yes, I'll join somebody. But I haven't got a clue what I do once I'm on LinkedIn. I haven't got a clue. It's probably simple, but um, I need training on that. But the trouble is, where do you stop? And I think that's the important thing, is how do we make what we're doing relative, how does it, we make it most effective, um, and how do we get the very, very best out of it? And we can actually dilute ourselves down a little bit, I think, if, we, if we're not careful. Think, if we, thinking we're doing social media, we're just spending an awful lot of, a lot of time a lot of time on it. In fact, um, what was I reading? I don't know if that was the important sheet. Um, I, was, uh, I was reading um, a blog only this morning, actually. Yeah, I was reading a blog by a chap. Um, I forgot his name. I better quote it just in case somebody knows the paragraph and then I'll be in trouble for plagiarising or something. Oh, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, anyway it, was a good, it was a good blog. But his opening paragraph was uh, Social media is a funny thing. When it's used well, it can enrich a community or fulfill a latent need for an otherwise invisible audience. When it's used personally, it's a great way to keep in touch with faraway friends we wish to live, who wish we wish to live closer. But when it's used poorly, it's a substitute for generating real value or worse, a waste of time. And I think we've got to be careful that we don't spend a lot of time thinking we're doing social work, social media. Um, and, pr and, and bigging it up when we're actually perhaps wasting a lot of time. So that's the importance of getting it right and knowing how to target and use this as a really important tool uh, for our organisations. Anyway, I'm supposed to speak about the survey, so I'll give a little bit of a reflection on, on the survey. And I, I did say to somebody who was on page four here, so um, this is the difficult... That was page four. There we go. <laughs> that might be the one. I knew it was something important about it. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, survey headlines. You may have already seen some of this, and f you know, forgive me if I go over it again, but I think it's absolutely important we do just uh, reflect on it. And I know that the full, this is only a summary, the full uh, report will be accessible very soon. I think it's going to be uploaded on, uh, I'm not sure which website you said, Clover. The Brilliant, brilliant. So, but so responses: 576 responses to the survey, of which 50% were local government. I believe every local government, every local council responded. That was really positive. 19% were from the third sector, 17% from Welsh government, 7% from NHS, and 6% from other services such as police, national parks authority, fire and rescue services. You know, so this is a big issue for. For, for public service in, in Wales, there's no doubt about it. So, um, organisations mostly used social media for communicating news and resources and providing information about services. Respondents felt that customer feedback, engagement with stakeholders and consultation were the key areas where their organisation could extend use. And the most commonly used social media tools were Twitter and Facebook. Um, the challenges that most of them felt they had uh, were was mainstreaming social media in Welsh public services. Um, uh, those um, challenges mainly were the lack of social media knowledge and skills, strategic guidance and leadership. Also, most almost three quarters of respondents felt that the sharing knowledge and other organisation experiences, examples of good practice, would be useful. It's got to be. It makes total sense. And there are a number of tools now available to support organisations in this. Um, firstly, nas National Principles of Public Engagement and Evaluation Toolkit. That's a mouthful, I don't know what that's abbreviated to. And that's available <laughs> on uh, Participation Cymru's website. Um, also, our... This, I'm phrasing it, I'm big her up, she won a pay rise. Uh, <laughs> Helen also has some really, really interesting blogs. It's worth going and having a look at some of the stuff that she's been doing. Um, it is really, really good. And it's looking at, a lot of them are looking at the return on investment. How social media influence is increasingly used to evaluate the effectiveness of, uh, of social media use. So it's really, really, some really interesting stuff. 
Um, and that's what the whole of this residential is about, I suppose, to start a programme of activities, connecting people who have something to share with uh, those that have something to learn. You know, this is, you know, also about gaining how-to skills, you know, really important how to do it, how to get it right, and how to get it wrong as well. So, you know, uh, we all need to learn. So, and other national activities happening at the moment, well, from elected member perspective, I know the WLJ are already currently providing social media training for elected members in, in Welsh local authorities and are also in the process of developing <coughs> social media guidance notes for councillors, and we need it. Also, the funding uh, has been made available by the Welsh Government to support local authorities who undertake webcasting. At the moment, uh, Carmarthenshire, Pembrokeshire and Cardiff are doing that. Um, our new chamber is going to go online, I hope, um, uh, next month or so, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing that as well. But I think there's, you know, there's going to be a requirement for us all to do that. Um, and I know the Minister will probably tell us a little bit more about that next week at the WLJ conference. Um, Digital inclusion is one of the key strands in, of the Welsh Government's Digital Wales strategy um, and is a, uh, seen as a key priority for efficient and effective delivery of public services and information. Communities 2 is a project that works with social media, uh, with organisations, sorry, um, to embed an understanding of the need for digital inclusion. And there is also then the Digital Inclusion Stakeholders Forum which is www.digitalinclusionwales.org.uk and that's been established to discuss how the digital divide is being addressed in Wales and, and, and the support that can be provided. The website is an online forum for, amongst other things, sharing views, news and good practice. So what's the next steps? Right, well, the findings of this survey will be used to inform some collaborative activities which include exploring innovative opportunities for sharing information and good practice, establish national practice guidelines, and to work with other national agencies to deliver to Digital Wales. As Welsh Public Service Practitioners, which you all are here, our, our role, well we are, our role is vital in forming, shaping and taking part, part in the digital revolution. Um, but it's important that we get things right. I talked about that blog earlier, and I, thought, I think that is absolutely, is absolutely correct. It's a fantastic new medium, but we need to very need, we certainly have to have to get that right. A simple message, I know it was, but um, very, you know, there's a r very real need for us to learn fast. We need to use social media well. We need to understand what we want to achieve with it. There is a real opportunity here to engage with people who want to be engaged with, and we must do that well, and we must not miss that opportunity. Currently, we have many enlightened and enthusiastic individuals like you all, um, but too, all too often, in all of our organisations, we've got lots of people who still think this is woolly stuff, and it's not really that important, is it? Um, sadly, if they're at the top of the organisation, that causes some real problems. Uh, I hope most leaders in most organisations are seeing that you cannot ignore this uh, revolution. You've got to be, uh, you really have uh, got, to be, got to be in it. You've got to really take it seriously and your leaders need to be investing all, um, resources into the development of this because it is, you know, the days of email as a fast communication, relative communication medium are over. They're a useful tool, but they're slow, unless you're sitting on it all day. They are not where people go at the moment. They're not getting anywhere. It's very specific to individuals. It's no good. Same as well, text is, is, is okay if you've got the right phone to do it on. Um, but, you know, this social media and honing it to actually be a, a tool for us is absolutely fundamental. It's no point me having 900 followers if 700 of them are in the United States. You know, it's great, you feel pretty big, because if you get an, an American follower, usually they've got about 30,000, and you think, this is good, isn't it? You know, I must be important, but I mean, everybody seems to have 30,000 odd followers out in, in America. But that's no use to me. How, you know, how engaging, you know, in my community, engaging with a load of people in Australia or America is making any difference. I'd be better off with 50 Monmouthshire followers 
who I can spread good news to. So when we're choosing our followers, when we're looking who to engage with, when we're stalking the, uh, the, <laughs> me, the you know, because we do, don't we stalk? You know, we think, oh, he's a cool person. I'm going to see who he follows. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll follow him. I'll follow her. You know, it's great. You know, and then they follow you back. And, it's, you know, and we do it all the time. And if you don't, if you say you don't do that, I'm sh I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you do. You try to find people who... Um, who are interesting, who have good content, because the, the, what you put in your tweets and on you know, your blogs and things are absolutely fundamental. I'm seeing some new people who are engaging in my council on Twitter politically, and they're actually using it as a really negative force, you know, slagging people off and why aren't you doing this and doing that, and that's absolutely no good. Does not do uh, those individuals any good, and doesn't do our organisations any good at all. You know, so it's really important, and that's what's probably what's happening tomorrow a bit, about, is, is to make sure you get understand what sort of content you need and, uh, and what sort of things you want to say. And be careful of what you say, because it says a lot about you. You know, um, it's not, I've said this on my own blog, you know, if you go, uh, in, how many of us would go and stand there in a room like this and start shouting at somebody and you are, you're absolutely useless, you know, why are you doing that? But, of course, when they do that on their, on, their, on their Twitter feed, that's exactly what they're doing. But they're saying it to thousands of people and they're not saying, the people aren't thinking, oh, yeah, I agree with you. They're saying, what a crap, why is he doing that, you know? And, and that's why it's so important that we use it in the right way, because it can be a very harmful tool as well for individuals and for organisations. So I haven't really got much more to say other than, yes, we're in a digital revolution, and it isn't going anywhere. And it's a really exciting place to be, and I think it's going to be growing and growing and growing. I don't know where it will get to. I just don't know. Um, but, you know, if you don't get on it, and get with it, you're going to be left way behind. So thank you for inviting me here uh, tonight. Um, I look forward to talking to many of you. I'm going to stay for the dinner. Um, I, I, I'm a great, as I said at the beginning, I'm a great lover of food, so that's why I, I had to tweet for my lunch, to, or rather for my dinner tonight. Can I just uh, thank you very much and, and hope that you have a, a really uh, good evening, but a very successful day tomorrow. And uh, I hope your organisations really benefit uh, from today. I don't know how much time we've got. Oh, we're already running over, are we? Yeah, slightly, sir. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, well I'm sorry. I'll oh, finish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, Peter said I bigged him up too much. I don't think I did, did I? No. Did I? Come on. No. no. Right. Uh, hands up who wants dinner next. <laughs> don't be shy. After dinner, we're back in here for the quiz. If you don't turn up, I'm going to hunt you down and kill you. Okay? <laughs> but it's optional. Last year, yeah, it's optional. <laughs> Death is optional. The quiz is not. Okay? Uh, there are prizes that include um, fizzy alcoholic beverages and chocolate. But most of all, I'd like once again to thank Peter because I think he was a true champion of digital Wales, digital inclusion, social media. Thank you very much.